Hello and welcome to 180 Online. My name is Miss Jess and I'm the leader at the 180 Student Ministry. We're going to be kicking off our brand new 180 season called Game Changer. But before that, we're actually going to get a message tonight, uh, just a standalone message before we get into our new season at 180. But before that, just a friendly reminder about the different things that we have going on at 180. Um, we have stuff going on throughout the week. Mondays is what we call Motivation Monday, where we do an Instagram Live. Um, quick Devo motivation just to kick off our week on the right foot. And then we have Terrific Tuesday, which is what you're seeing right now, which is our weekly 180 service. We have Wacky Wednesday, where we do just crazy viral challenges. Uh, thankful Thursdays where we just share what we are thankful for, especially during this season. And then finally we have our Friday Fridays where we interview just impactful people who are doing uh, great things in their community just to inspire um, our students. Um, so with that said, definitely stay tuned, uh, keep in contact with us, like, share, all that stuff, um, and just keep up with us. Um, as we uh, go through this new season, this Game Changer season. So with that said, uh, stay tuned now because we have our very own Brianna Spear bringing a special message. So take a look. Hey 180, my name is Brianna and I'm so excited to be sharing with you today something that I've been working on and something that God's put on my heart to share with you guys. Um, I really hope that it encourages you um, especially in this time of the quarantine craziness. I hope that it's just really helping to um, encourage you and motivate you in this time. Um, but before we start, let's go ahead and just pray together over our time together. So go ahead and close your eyes, bow your heads if you're comfortable um, so that we can pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to learn more about you, even through technology, God. Um, I ask that everything that I say um, would be clear and understandable, God, that I would say the things that you have for whoever is watching this video to hear, God, that it would touch them and um, encourage them and help them to learn and grow, God. Um, we just thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives, God. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. So today we're going to be talking about control. And I don't know about you guys, but I am a major control freak. And by that, I mean that I really, really like for things to go the way that I planned. So like, for example, if I plan to hang out with my friends and go out to dinner and then something happens, I usually get pretty upset. And in this time of the quarantine, there's been a lot of my plans that have been disrupted. Like I'm not able to go to school anymore and I'm not able to go to work anymore and I'm not able to see my friends or my family anymore in person um, and for me it was really really hard to accept that to be able to um, you know not just survive in this time but to be able to thrive to be able to be growing and um, learning and for me the quarantine was just causing me all types of stress and anxiety and anger and sadness and all these things that you know, emotions are like a good thing. Jesus had emotions too. But it's not about what you're feeling. It's how you respond to how you're feeling. And for me, when I would get really anxious or upset or angry, I would kind of take it out on the people around me. Like, I live with my husband and my brother. And when I get really upset, sometimes, you know, I'll be rude to them or... I will ignore them because I'm sad or anything like that and I'm learning you know like that's not healthy um, and it's also not fair to the people around me to be treating them that way and so that really got me thinking how can I respond in a better way and I was reading in the Bible and God just kind of put this passage on my heart and so I'd like to share it with you guys and then we can go ahead and kind of break it down together um, I'm just excited to share this with you. I hope that you are encouraged. So we're going to start in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. And it says, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? 
Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't make or work. They don't make their clothing or work. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So, how can we be responding in a better way? How can we be not worrying? How can we be just taking it one day at a time and not um, acting out or panicking or any of those things? Um, Matthew 6.30 says, And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. So why do you have so little faith? And then Matthew 6.33 says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you all that you need. So to overcome my worry, I need to have two things, big faith and to seek the kingdom of God above all else. Now you might be thinking, Bree, that's really great and all. Love that the Bible says that sounds really cool, but like, how do I actually do those things? So there's three ways that um, I've been practicing and have been helping me to have big faith and seek the kingdom of God above all else. So the first thing that's been helping me a lot is to serve. Um, when we serve others, it kind of puts into perspective what's going on around us. So when we're serving or doing something for someone else, we're taking our needs and our wants and we're putting them below the needs and wants of somebody else around us. And when we do that, we're humbling ourselves. We're becoming a servant like Jesus. And when we, um, <clears throat> when we take this step back and we're able to put the needs of others before ourselves, we take back some control here. Because even though we can't control our situation, when we're serving others, we're helping to make a difference. You know, when you're writing a letter to a friend or including them when you're playing your game, that makes a difference for them because they might be struggling too. And that reminder that they're loved and that you want to be around them and that they're included could really make a difference for them. And I'm finding that when I am helping others, it helps to change my perspective. So I'm not really focused anymore about what I want or what I need. I'm able to focus on what's really important, which is to love the people around me. And that helps me to feel more in control because I'm not just sitting back and watching anymore. I'm actually actively helping other people in this time. So then the second thing is to be reading the Bible. So when we're in the word of God consistently, we're actually able to see what's true and what's not. And I don't know about you guys, but in this time especially, I see fear everywhere. Everyone I talk to is afraid and it's so um, frustrating because when everyone else is afraid, I want to feel afraid. And I'm realizing though that I shouldn't be afraid. You know, we just read about how we shouldn't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will bring its own worries. And today is enough for today. We should just be focusing on today. And so when I'm actually in the word of God, when I'm reading the Bible, I'm able to see that while I'm out of control, while I can't physically control when I go back to school or when I get to see my friends again, God is in control the whole time. You know what's crazy is that he knew this quarantine was coming. He knew it was coming. He knew we were going to be in our houses. He knew this virus was coming. He knows every situation that we're going through. And he's not surprised by it. While we were surprised, we were taken back. We weren't prepared necessarily. God was always ready for it. And so while we aren't in control, he is in control the whole time. And it says 
in Jeremiah 29 11 that he has plans to prosper us and not to harm us plans to give us hope and a future and so when we're sitting here panicking or being worried really there's no reason for it because God has already figured out you know the ending to the story he already knows how we're going to get through this and so all we need to do is to be in the word so that we have the promises of God in our heart and then when we have the promises of God in our heart we're able to face what's going on um, with good control of our thoughts so how does reading the Bible give us some control back it gives us control because when we know the truth the truth sets us free we're not um, consumed with what other people think about us. We're not consumed by our emotions anymore because we know that God is the defender of our soul and that he's the king of kings and lord of lords. And he's known since the beginning of time that this situation was going to happen. And so he knows exactly how it's going to end. And then the third one is that we can be praying. And right now it seems like everything is uncertain. Maybe something that you're going through in your life, even outside of this quarantine, feels really uncertain. And um, I know personally that sometimes I feel like I have more questions than answers. Like, are my family members going to be safe while I'm separated from them? I don't live with my family for the most part. They all live in New Jersey and I live down here in Florida. Um, and for me, I'm like, are they healthy? Are they okay? Are they working? Do they have enough money? Um, when can I go back to school and start making money again? When um, am I going to stay healthy in this time? Are my friends okay? Um, why am I feeling so anxious sometimes? All of these things, if you're not careful, your thoughts start to go and go and go. But when we pray, first of all, we're able to have clarity of mind, just like when we were talking about being in the Word of God. And when we're praying, we get to advocate on behalf of people who are sick or who are fighting from recovery from addiction or are struggling financially. We get to advocate for them in prayer. I was reading recently in the book of Daniel that when we pray, angels literally are dispatched. Like, have you ever heard of like the 911 dispatchers? When you call 911, they send a police car or a fire truck or whatever to the area that's in need. When we pray, we're literally sending angels out to the areas that need help. And so when we're praying, we're not just sitting back and feeling helpless, we're actually being part of the solution. And your prayers are more powerful than you even know because you get to help to command angel armies. So I just wanna close out with a few last thoughts. Your father already knows your needs, your father being God. He already knows exactly what you need. He's not shocked by your situation. He's not shocked by how you're feeling. And he says in his word in Matthew 6, 33, that he will give you everything you need. So then why are we worrying? He already knows what we need. He already has a plan in place to get us exactly what we need. Um, so there's no reason for us to fear. There's no reason for us to worry because we know that God has already handled it. It's already taken care of. Um, we don't know the future, but we know the God who created it. Um, he knew from the beginning of time when you would be born, what you would have in your life. He knows the number of hairs on your head. That's how much he loves you. And if he's able to know the number of cells in your body he created you, then what makes us think that he can't handle our situation? He knows exactly what's going on. Even when we're out of control, God is in control. So why should we fear? There's nothing to be fearful for. I do want to just give you an opportunity because I think it's really important when we talk about fear, we talk about um, emotions, we talk about such difficult topics that um, we need to know the one who created us. I think it's so important to know who he is and to experience his love. And when we're in the word, we learn about so many things. But the most important thing is that when we we weren't even born yet. Jesus died for us because he loves us and he wants us to be able to rely on him in these times. And he wants us to be able to put our trust in him. And so if you haven't before asked Jesus into your heart, I'd like to give you the opportunity today. You can just go ahead and close your eyes and don't look around. But if you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart, but you know that you need peace, 
if you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart, but you know that you want to be relying on someone who's reliable, who's in control, who knows what's going on in your circumstance, and he's not afraid of it. I would ask that on the count of three, you would just raise your hand. And um, yeah, and then I'd love to pray with you. We can all pray a prayer together. So one, today is the day of salvation. Don't wait for tomorrow for what you can do today. Two, Jesus died on the cross for you because he loves you. He knows everything about you and he died for your sins so that you can be um, with him forever. Three, go ahead and raise your hand if you want to accept Jesus today. I know that there's people all over watching this video right now who are accepting Jesus into their heart. And I, I just want you to know that every time someone comes to Jesus, there's a party in heaven. And I just love that so much. And so right now, let's just pray together, um, even if you've accepted Jesus before, just to remind us um, of who we are in him. So you could say, Dear Jesus, thank you for forgiving me for my sins. Thank you for knowing my circumstances. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I ask that you come into my heart that you take away my fear, that you take away my worry. I put my life into your hands. I love you, Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Thank you so much, 180. It's been an absolute pleasure to get to talk to you guys today. And I look forward to actually seeing you in person when this crazy quarantine is over. I love you guys.